Um, I will go through about three to five books a week, and that's like on an easy week. Um, and, uh, and and the way I'm able to do this, to read as much as I do, and I always recommend this to people as well, um, is I listen to books. There is a book called The Shallows, um, what the internet is doing to our brains. And what it basically says is that our sort of addiction, yeah, actually just, I'm gonna, I, so when I do my lives, I, I drop a lot of books, so just feel free to, to write it down. I do need to eventually do a video where I just kind of show you guys all of my books. Um, but The Shallows, the book is, one, the first book I'm gonna mention and talk about is called The Shallows, What the Internet is Doing to Our Mind. And basically what, what the book says is like our sort of constantly doing this, we're not able to sit, we're no longer able to sit and focus on anything anymore, or at least uh, the majority of us are are not um, because we're constantly, our brains have now been primed and programmed to just constantly go to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. That's not good. That is not a good thing. Um, and the way he kind of broke it down, uh, he said that eventually your brain starts to lose, lose these sort of, you need these deep grooves in your brain and you get those deep grooves from like focusing intently on something like you know a book um or like painting or um meditating and um but what we're doing is the opposite and we're essentially because we're jumping from one thing to another we're essentially going to in about five to ten years of constantly doing this um ask me that question again um i want to finish this thought so i don't get distracted you guys know how i am <laughs> um but uh like after five to ten years of continuing down the path that we're on right now we're gonna lose at least this is his theory and I believe it we're gonna lose our ability to just like sit and focus and that's why um, yeah and that's why I, I recommend audiobooks I mean I have friends that are like they you know they have their doctorates they have doc their doctors I have friends that you know work in corporate these are executives and they can't sit and focus anymore and if you read the news and news articles you you'll see that um, more and more articles are getting shorter and shorter because they're realizing the reading audience is incapable of uh thank you is incapable of reading long you know texts anymore and now you're actually noticing a lot more um uh online sort of uh, publications are also just putting like audio uh versions of the article so that people can just listen to it because people are losing their their ability to focus so my answer to that is I always recommend when I first start recommending books, I say, just go on Audible and listen, right? Find a book and listen. If you get the physical book and you're able to sit and read, like more power to you. But <laughs> I don't know if you guys feel free to chime in if this is different. Um, but for a lot of people that I've, you know, that I've talked to, being, being able to just sit and read has become very difficult for people. Um, and so you can use an audiobook as a way to sort of retrain your brain to focus. Um, and what do you believe they are gaining with that loss of focus? I, I don't know. I think we're not even thinking long term what the effects of this is going to be um, on our society. Um, because long term, five, ten years, if we continue down this path of just rapidly sort of flipping through things or whatever. No, I, I, I get you that the internet, you know, is a good thing. I wouldn't be able to communicate with you guys without it, but that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying um, if, you're, if you're going to sit and read and you are, you have, you're having a hard time focusing because a lot of people that I recommend, that's very sweet, thank you. A lot of people that I've recommended books to, I see them, they'll buy the book, but then they can't finish it. And I, I think that if you really are interested in the content of a book, that you just try that, you know, an audio version, get it? Because then this, because you can listen. I mean, you guys are listening to me talk right now. Um, and then what I do and what allows me to go through books really, um, uh, I guess quickly, not even quickly, because I don't want to say quickly because I'm like, that's not my goal. It's not to go through it as quickly as possible. But what makes me hold focus to a book is that when I, when I play it, I play it about, I've trained my brain to listen at, 3.5x speed now, but I didn't start at 3.5x speed. 
I started at about two speed and I've worked myself, you know, up to 3.5x speed, depending on the narrator. Sometimes if it's like a British accent, I drop it to three because I have a hard time. Um, so it's harder for me to understand. I don't know why. Um, but over the years, I've trained my mind to listen at that speed. And the reason why I listen at that speed is because it's going so fast. Like I, I, I don't even have the energy to sort of get distracted by my own thoughts. I'm ego focused on what is being said. And the way I see it is if you can listen to a conversation, if you can listen to a podcast, you might as well go listen to a book and get the information and finish these books, finish these books. So that is a very long way of saying, <laughs> um, that that's how you know I get a lot of the information that I have you know kind of put together in these videos from it's from reading loads and loads of books um and somebody just asked what do you do while you're listening I paint um I don't really need to think when I paint I I notice that um when I have to like edit pictures I work as a photographer as well when I'm editing pictures I can't listen to an audiobook because I think there's like it's a different part of my mind that's working when I'm like working on you know photoshop or something but when i'm painting like it's like i'm in a state of flow and so i can listen to books because like i'm not my mind is not in control of what my body is doing and i'm just kind of mixing paint and i'm not really like the art is kind of flowing through me on this level and then i'm able to you know listen to an audiobook so i would recommend listening to audiobooks I will, I, I usually will put, if, if I've actually started getting into a habit of when I post a video, um, it is meditative. When I post a video on TikTok, I'll put in the comments books for you guys to check it out. And I, I, I do, I do, I will say, I will suggest get the audio version because what ends up happening is that people go and get the physical book and it's just harder to now. I mean, you have to kind of retrain we have to retrain our minds to focus now if you're great if that if you're not there that's not you like more power to you but i can i'm speaking for myself and a lot of my friends they've had issues with this as well just because we're constantly next thing next thing next thing and we're not focusing so that's my suggestion um do, 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 do. what books should i should you start with um i do that um that is a great question depends on what you're interested in right so if you're i can recommend books on stoicism i can recommend books on the simulation i can recommend books on aliens i don't know just you tell me what you're interested in and i can definitely recommend that to you um and that's what i mean yeah re listening to audiobook is a it's it's a faster way to upload information into your brain in, in my opinion so i can you know if i sit you know, next to a friend and we have a challenge and I go, okay, time for us. Let's, let's do a book challenge, book reading challenge. My friend can sit and read the book and it'll probably take her like a week to get through the book because work and stuff like that is going on. If I listen to an audio book, um, I can finish that book in a day and read it twice, right? And then read it one more time um, in two days. And then now I've like memorized the information, right? So it's it's a very efficient way to get information fast and if you've got the technology like, why not take advantage of it um do, 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 do i listen to fiction i don't listen to a lot of fiction um i've been th i've been thinking that i need to get back into it but um the problem with fiction is that i guess where i'm on my the path i'm on right now is i'm trying to i'm really trying to put together a, a, a an understanding my big theory of everything i guess um, about the nature of reality and um, so right now in the last few years of my life it's been more information gathering and trying to um, bolster some theories that I've had so uh, not doing a lot of fiction but I do have a couple uh, fiction books that are my favorite one of which is um, Recursion by Blake Crouch if you guys haven't heard of Blake Crouch um, he writes about quantum physics but it's obviously fiction and the two books that I've read of his are dark matter and recursion dark matter was okay like I kind of saw like like probably like a few chapters in I was like oh I know where this is gonna go it was still a fun story but I found it like sort of predictable recursion and I feel like I mentioned this on every live recursion blew my freaking mind if you guys haven't read or checked out Blake Crouch's 
Crouch's book, I would say start with recursion, recursion rather. Um, it was just an interesting approach to time travel and shifting realities. And if you're into that, um, definitely check that out. Recursion by Blake Crouch. Yeah, so we're, we're, we're what, two books in now, all right? Um, so somebody mentioned my last video. Oh, um, yeah, the loop, the infinity loop. I wasn't expecting that to go viral. Uh, TikTok is so interesting. I have a video that I'm actually sitting on that I was about to post and then I was like, man, like, I don't know if anybody's gonna watch this. I do this to myself a lot. I, I'm like sitting, I've got like five, six videos that are like recorded, captioned, ready to go. And then I get ready to post it. And then I'm like, oh, man, like, I feel like, I feel like people are gonna be like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> like, I, I feel like people are already saying that, like, you know, like what? But I don't know, a lot of people, majority of people when they, when they, um, when they comment are respectful and are kind and it's it, I, I am getting a lot of comments from people saying you know I'm glad to have like to see that other people are you know thinking about the same thing so that I do appreciate um I'm in the biggest shift reset I would love to know more um well I'm, I don't I don't know if I'm manifesting you but I'm certainly attracting you guys right so um I will try to keep, yeah, thank you, attracting you guys. I'm not manifesting you guys. I have, uh, I'm attracting you guys, so that's good. <laughs> I'm putting myself out there and I'm attracting like-minded people. So uh, I, I really like that, help people not feel alone. Yeah, I think that's important. It, you know, and that's what I have to try to remember because sometimes you kind of get lost in your own head, right? And I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm an artist, so I don't, I don't typically have to interact with people if I don't want to. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I spend most of the day, most of my time in my studio, and these are the people. If you guys go and look through my videos, you'll see like there's always a painting in the background. These are my paintings, and so those are the people that I interact with, and that's like peace for me. And I do this, I paint, you know, four or five hours a day, and if I don't paint. Uh, I'm usually creating videos now or, or writing or doing something on my podcast, but my, my, my daily life is spent creating. And this, this whole TikTok thing was, a, was a, an exercise in putting myself out there um, just to see what happened. Um, and uh, thank you. And I, uh, you know, it's been interesting, but you, you know, you, you get into the process and you know, these aren't normal ideas, right? And that's why I, I decided to start putting these videos out because, you know, you go out and you interact with people. I don't know about you guys, um, but, and feel free to jump in if this experience is, you know, you guys kind of have the same experience, but most of the time when you have to interact with people, it's typically like, hey, how are you? I'm great, how are you? Oh, great, cool. How's the weather? <laughs> um, did you see so-and-so happen to do this and this or whatever? So it's that kind of like very surface level conversation, which is fine, um, but it, it's not like interesting to me sort of thing. Like I sort of always kind of wish for or seek out kind of deeper conversations, deeper connections with people. And, um, and except for a very kind of small uh, group of individuals that I interact with, there's not too many people that I can talk to about, you know, these, these sort of things. Um, so I, you know, decided, let me just take the stuff that I'm thinking about, write them down, you know, clean it up and then put the videos out and whatever happens, happens. And um, yeah, you feel, I try to stay away from others because exactly, so you, 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 you feel me like you you get it um but yeah so but i i wasn't really expecting people for it to click with with anybody really um but i'm glad that it does and i'm glad and i'm happy and i'm grateful for people who do say um you know thank you for putting this out there i've thought about this and i'm just it's good to know that i'm not the only person thinking this and like I've said in previous lives, like I just, I think it's, I don't like the fact that we live in a society where free thinking is sort of um, discouraged, you know? Um, I think we could do better um, because that, that, that's a, it's a type of creativity, right? Taking all of these sort of ideas, conceptualizing your own theories, coming up with your own theories, and then talking about it, right? Sharing our observations because my experience you know, it's different from yours and your experience is different from mine, but you might have a piece of the puzzle that I'm looking for. You know what I mean? So 
why isn't this encouraged? Like why are, we're all here. Like I, I did the, there's a video I had called the, the house or whatever, right? So we're, this is the house, right? And having met you guys too. Um, and thank you, you know, so much for being kind. Um, this is the house in the, in the, the analogy that I gave, where you woke up in a house, you wake up in a house, you look around, you know, there's people there, nobody has a memory of, you know, how they got here, right? And then you try to go up to them and say, hey, what are we doing in this house? You know, why can't we leave? And people kind of look at you like, what are you talking about? Right? And that feeling of, okay, why am I the only person with questions there? Right? Like you're awake in a situation, right? And this is earth, right? So we find ourselves in earth, right? And we have some sort of inclination of what this world is, right? But we're told something different and it doesn't quite really match up, right? Thank you for subscribing to my podcast. It's awesome. Um, you guys are great. You guys are so kind. I like, hype myself up in my head that like these lives are going to be something completely different. And then when I do lives, like everybody's just so sweet. I appreciate you guys. Um, but yeah, so we're on earth, right? And we're told that this is, you know, human beings are like, what is it? Like, <laughs> or what is the, like the current, like uh, materialistic sort of approach to what humankind is that we're like pond scum. You know what I mean? That like just crawled out of like cesspool. <laughs> and then, you know, we like evolved from monkeys and now like we're, we're just insignificant nothings or like we're tumors on earth and all these sort of like horrible, horrible things they say about the human race. Um, but that's not true, right? Um, but we're encouraged to perceive ourselves and others in this very specific way. And, um, and I sort of reject that. Um, I, I sort of reject that because, you know, people who are deeply involved in the, in the study of like quantum physics or, or, you know, neurology and things of that nature, or even doctors, right? They, they say, um, that no, there's something else going on. So in one of my videos, I talked about the nocebo effect, right? Yes, definitely keep rejecting that. Um, I talked about the nocebo effect and the placebo effect. And, you know, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the, uh, placebo effect but basically if I give you an, an inert substance like a sugar pill and I tell you this thing is going to heal you if you believe it's going to heal you then you get healed the same thing if I give you the same sugar pill and I tell you that this might harm you if you believe it it's going to harm you I just finished the book that was recommended by um one of the one of my subscribers on my channel um it is called you are the placebo by Dr. Joe Dispenza you are the placebo by Dr. Joe Dispenza if you guys have not read that book, I just finished it. Um, actually, I've just finished reading it the second time. It is just, oh, chef's kiss, just so good. Um, it, it, it falls along the line of kind of what I've been reading this past month. Um, over the last couple of weeks, I have read um, Quantum Jumps by Cynthia Larson. I have read uh, You Are the Placebo. Um, by Dr. Joe Dispenza. I have read um, Neville Goddard, The Complete Reader. Um, there's another book I read, I can't think of the name right now, but I think it's called Reality Something or Another, Reality Construction, Reality Shift. Um, if you're really interested, send me a DM and I'll send it to you. They all kind of echo the same sort of idea um, that we are, that reality is a mind, is, is, is a mind, Mind projected experience, if, if I'm saying that right. Basically, essentially what I've been saying on my, um, I do read comments, uh, <laughs> essentially what I've been saying in my videos, which is that, you know, all of time is happening at once and everything exists right now as a probability, right? And then your, your consciousness, you're not the body. You are not the body, you are not the body, you are not the body, it's just a robot, just a vehicle. Your consciousness, right, is actually, um, what is in control here. And you can sort of decide, consciously decide where you can, what reality experience you would like to have. Does that make sense, right? So it's not about manifesting reality. It's not about creating a reality. There's another video that I've been, I, I, I do read the comments guys, but I also wanna finish what I'm saying. Like you're saying, <laughs> I don't read comments. I've been reading comments. Um, I, yeah. But I also want to finish what I'm saying so I don't like ADD off to some other tangent because what I'm saying is important. Um, so 
See, I just forgot what I was talking about. <laughs> um, but yeah, so these these books, they what I, the reason why I've been kind of listening to them is because I'm trying to sort of drive in uh, in my mind uh, an understanding. Um, like I want it to become second nature. And more importantly, this video I've been sitting on about negative thoughts, I, I talked about it two lives ago. It's on, it should be on my YouTube. And I talked about, I had a posted sticker on my chest and I said, um, and I said, uh, energetic viruses. So this concept that we're about to like talk about guys, it's a little wild. Um, and I'm going to post a video on this and actually, you know what? That's great. I will kind of preface it to you guys. Like I'm going to preview it rather with you guys and then you guys let me know what you think about the concept um have you guys watched future rama if you have say hello um thank you and um so and then if you guys watch doctor who also say hello say hello so um and i'll try to read comments since somebody's saying i'm not reading comments okay <laughs> um so there was a future rama episode where uh there were these brain parasites do you guys remember that where it was like it would like attach to people's brains or whatever and then um it would uh sort of like hijack the person's body do you guys remember that episode you remember uh that episode okay cool and then if you guys watch doctor who there was an episode called the silence where it was like basically aliens have always existed and have been more or less controlling our lives um so take those two concepts and marry the two together. And that was kind of what I was talking about. I haven't posted the video yet. I was like sitting on it. I was about to post it. And then I was like, I'll just go live. <laughs> um, but basically what I was saying in video, and I'm gonna post a video probably tomorrow or something like that or Tuesday. Yeah, the silence. Um, is that we have been programmed to expect aliens to take like physical form right humanoid form not to say that there, there aren't you know humanoid aliens out there right the you know et take me to your leader type of like you know physical aliens that could be a thing um but it's not just one thing right there could be non-corporeal aliens extraterrestrials as well boom somebody somebody said it exactly as I said it they're not physical exactly exactly right so if you look you can look at our reality I'm, I'm gonna like look away from the comments for a little bit because this is important but if you you can look at our reality in two ways you can look at our, our reality as a plane no not shape-shifting not corporal they actually discuss this a lot on like Star Trek they every once in a while they will have an alien species that don't take physical form non-physical right so you can look at earth as a planet right which you know it is um and then you could look at aliens on earth you know invading earth as being like physical species a physical corporal right embodied species coming into the planet right you can also look at our planet as a as a plane as an astral plane and then you could also have non-corporeal species enter into our planet or our plane rather and, and and affect our consciousness right affect change physically by sort of glumming themselves or attaching themselves like psychically and feeding to like feeding off of our our negative energy right the, the energy that we generate so for example I don't know how you if you guys pay attention to how you feel like you watch your emotions yeah so if I say something no, this is a good one somebody says something goofy right to you and before you even have a chance to like think about what they said you feel the emotion that's energy right so you can feel that emotion that's energy right and you can feel it generating right and then i don't know if you guys have ever gotten really angry but when you're like oh like that's energy like if you could see it you would see that it's your your mind is generating energy why would they need our negative energy so get good point so right now you have a phone right you're watching me on your phone um 
your phone is an electronic device, right? And electrons are negatively charged particles. So your phone is, is called an electronic device because it feeds on electrons, right? So it doesn't feed on protons, which is something that's positively charged. Are there things that feed on that need protonic energy? I don't know, probably. Um, but specifically electronics need negative energy. So to me, my theory was, well, if, you know, if your phone, your phone's not evil, but it does need negative energy, it needs electricity, right? Electrons, right? So your phone needs a negative energy, then there, there has to be things that also would consume negative energy. And of course, then like, you know, things like, uh, gosh, what is that? Monsters Inc., you know, silly movie, but, but there's something there, right? So the monsters or whatever would scare the kids and then capture their energy. So just sort of like that was what I was thinking and um, and it made sense. And there was a book I read, I'm not gonna be able to think of the name right now, but like I said, DM me and I'll send it to you. Uh, I believe it's called, no, yeah, I thought of it. It's called Physics of the Soul by Dr. Amit. And I'm not gonna say his last name because I'll butcher it, but he talked about that, but he, didn't say that they were like feeding off of negative, en negative energy. So he's a physicist and he said, the chances are, or the odds of alien species coming to our plane or dimension or whatever using, um, you know, like vehicles, like spaceships or whatever, um, are not improbable, but slim. Um, they would more than likely travel here non-corporally right they would send their astral bodies so i thought about that and then there was another book i read i now that one i won't be able to remember the name i can see the picture but i can't remember the name right now but it talked about it talked about hybrid humans um it was interesting i i, I didn't come to any conclusions either way um but they were saying how when people saw ufos um the way they moved right they don't it was like they kind of defied the laws of uh, physics, but that's if you perceive them to be actually like mechanical. I mean, they look like ships, but they don't move like ships, right? So that that prompted me to think that, okay, if they're responding to people like psyche, like they're then they're almost psychically linked to us in a way. And they're not like new, like in one of my videos, I talked about that UFOs and UAPs or whatever. You know, there's always been lights in the sky. So they've always kind of been around. Well, I don't want to say always, that's not fair. That's not fair to say, and that's not accurate because who, who really knows, right? But from what we've seen, you know, like if you look back, you sort of see like, oh, that's a lot of hearts. Uh, <laughs> you sort of see them depicted in art through, in art through time, at least through recent time. Um, or at least through recorded history or whatever, but who really knows how how long you know human history is, as I sort of alluded to in my most recent videos. So um, my sort of theory, just kind of throwing all together, is that you know why we're all kind of bracing ourselves for a physical invasion, and I feel like the invasion has already occurred, and these entities are not corporal; they're psychic they're non-physical and somehow they have sort of glommed themselves onto the human race and now they are feeding off of our sort of ability to manifest, you know, or not manifest, but to create and generate energy, specifically negative energy. Um, so that my whole sort of random weird spiel uh, for the day. Um, and uh, so let me know what you guys think about that. Does that sound crazy? Does it make sense? Is it wild? Because that's kind of, I mean, I took all of that that I just said and I try to condense that into 60 seconds. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, but I have questions that you may be able to help too. Feel free to, you know, ask the question. But yeah, it, it makes sense. The reason why I also feel like, feel like that is because, so in a couple of lives ago and I have them, on my YouTube as well, I talked about, yes I did, uh, hi, um, I talked about how, so the voice in your head, right, it's always negative. Why is it always negative? Well, I mean, it, 
Okay, somebody just said, should we say invasion? I don't think it should be negative like that, but it's negative. Like, it's, <laughs> you know, like that's, it is what it is. You know what I mean? Like, it, they're, they're not really, if my, if my theory or what I've just postulated is accurate and they are sort of psychically, you know, feeding on our psychic energy or whatever, how is that not, like, how is that a good thing? Because I guess what I was going to say is that so when you sit, you have that voice in your head, those invasive thoughts or whatever, that's like always negative, right? And you're constantly, like even like here when I was getting ready to sit to like, you know, post this video, um, you know, it's exactly, it's majority negative, right? Like it's always like, like I'm getting ready to go live and I'm literally have to fight against myself, but is that myself, right? I've been programmed, we've been cultured to think that that voice in your head, because you hear it, it's yours, but is it, right? Because I have stated, I have stated an intent. And my intent is this is what I want to do, right? I, I'm, I wanna do I wanna do a live or I wanna post a video. And then here comes this like negative thought that is like, well, should you really post a video or nobody's gonna come to the live or it's not gonna go well. Like it, it's always negative. And it's not and it's always contrary to what I stated that I want to do, right? Even if it's something as simple as, you know. I want to lose weight or I don't want to lose weight, but I'm saying like somebody saying to themselves, they want to lose weight or, you know, they, they, you know, they want to be better. They want to stop drinking or whatever. There's always, there's that negative thing, the negative voice in your head that steers you, that constantly steers you off a path that's actually positive for you towards a negative path. And you're constantly battling with it. So what I've said, and I've continued, I will continue to say is that, you know, that's not you because it doesn't serve you, right? The analogy that I used, um, the analogy that I used is like a parasite, right? Specifically, there's a parasite called, I think it's Toxoplasmosis gondii, if I'm saying that properly, I think I am. I think that's the right one. Um, I did do the paintings, uh, that's what I do. Um, but the parasite, um, what it does is it hijacks the brain, I believe it's of a mouse. If you guys have heard this before, let me know. Um, but it, somebody said venom. <laughs> I love that. Um, but yeah, venom too. Uh, it hijacks the, that's great. Um, it hijacks the, the brain of the mouse and gets it to be, hey, I'm Spider Woman. That would be so dope, guys. Like, I've had a couple of people say that, like, I look like a character from, like, Marvel, and I'm like, <laughs> oh my god um but what it does is it hijacks the the brain of a mouse and then it gets the mouse to behave in a way that would be con you know contradictory to its own like you know well-being like its own self-preservation right um that's typically what parasites do they don't um they don't um the parasites don't really they're more concerned with serving their own right meeting their own needs right not necessarily the needs of the host and that's what they do they hijack the host and then move it towards or get it to behave in ways that are beneficial for the parasite not for the host and so to me if you're constantly having a negative thought then why can't that negative thought that you're constantly trying to fight i mean people go to therapy people take medication people are meditating you're you're putting in all this effort to sort of quiet your mind why can't we quiet our own minds unless there's something else happening? And of course, I'm just, you know, I'm just a person on TikTok, you know, whatever. I guess if if you heard it from the government or the news and they said, breaking news, uh, humanity has been infected by a, a psychic parasite that, you know, prompts people to behave, you know, in negative ways and in ways that are detrimental to their own, you know, self uh, gain. I guess then people will believe it. I, I don't know, but I don't tend to make it a habit of waiting um the parasite listening to a song <laughs> you guys are so funny um, <laughs> um but i don't i'm not i'm not gonna wait for some official to tell me that this is what's going on i mean i'm looking up and i'm seeing that it doesn't make sense and i'm not the only one seeing that it doesn't make sense it's so funny um not funny haha uh funny interesting um that could you hack a parasite i don't know maybe um what is interesting is that I remember reading The Power of Now uh, a, a while ago in Eckhart Tolle, he called it a pain body. 
but he was more or less the same thing, right? He's saying that there's something that's in your body or in your mind that's not supposed to be, right? And then he gave ways to, you know, quiet your mind and not listen to it. But everybody's pretty much, yeah, the pain body. Everybody's pretty much saying the same thing in different ways. Like, we have brains, right? We have, like, I don't, I feel like most people that are sitting and listening to me talk right now, like, you're not, uh, you're not a, mm, demons, right? That's another word, but that's all more or less the same thing. Like, you're not a person who just, like, sort of thinks, like, along the lines. Like, you're, you're the kind of person, I feel like, that would look around and say, okay, I'm going to come to my own conclusions and that's kind of what i'm echoing here like i'm looking around and i'm sort of saying okay everybody's kind of saying that there's something that is sort of feeding off the mind of the human race and kind of staring us down these paths and if you're spiritual or christian you might call it a demon if you're you know esoteric you might call it a pain body if you're you know if you're I don't know, scientific, you might say, okay, it's a, an astral form or something like that, or an energetic par parasite or whatever it is, but it's all kind of describing, it's saying that something's not right, you know? Um, it's saying that something's not right. And I don't, you know, I, I, I don't know how else to kind of drive that home um, beyond just saying, hey, something's not right. Do with that information what you will. Um, that's that. Uh, I wonder, is Beyonce through her parasite out? I don't know, but like, Bible literally said we wrestling against something that's not flesh and blood. That is true. Um, waking in a good way and good things happen and bad things try to stop it. I don't know. Um, so yeah, that's sort of the things. Those are the things that I sort of think about. Um, and that's what I had the video on. So you will uh, see that probably go live um, probably next week, maybe Wednesday, once I kind of figure out the timing for that or finish editing it. And then you guys can feel free to sort of let me know if you agree with the way I phrased it uh, or not. Um, but I will let you know that I don't care. <laughs> I don't care if you disagree because that's my, that's, my, that's my observation. Um, and I, I spent a lot of time, energy and effort, you know, researching that and that's the conclusion that I've come to. Um, and uh, it makes sense to me and it has helped me. That knowledge, that I just shared with you guys, um, knowing that, you know what I mean? Knowing that it's not, hi, um, thank you. Knowing that it's not me, right, has allowed me to separate from it and thus sort of slowly begin to kind of re, re, what is the word I'm looking for here? Re-control, is that a word? Um, retrain my mind or re, I'm trying to find a word. Of all the things that I said, I can't find this one word. Uh, but reclaim, there we go, reclaim my mind for whatever this is and set my own consciousness on a path that best benefits me. That best benefits me. Right? Um, so that's where reclaim. Yeah. <laughs> the best benefits me. So now, from, you know, after coming to that conclusion, when I hear it, I just go, okay, well, that's, it's always negative and it's never true. Um, do with that information what you will and then navigate your reality to where you want to go. Um, you pretty much know what others want to know, positive vibes and influence, all about positive as much as I can. Um, you know, sometimes it's a, it's a, it's interesting, you know, because you, you do kind of watch it. Um, which is why I always, and I will always recommend meditation. Um, I will always recommend meditation because it's one way of, you guys are so sweet. It's one way of really watching and seeing that separating yourself from the voice right so when you get into the habit of meditation and you're kind of watching your mind sort of say its thing you kind of reaffirm that okay but this is what i'm doing right now so i'm repeating this mantra or i'm focusing my breath right i have decided that this is what i want to do this is my will i've expressed my will and this is what I want to do. And then when the voice sort of starts this thing and you start trying to sort of, you know, you catch yourself getting drawn in this, in this way, in this direction, which you've always, you know, been drawn to, that's a habit, that's a force of habit. You can kind of shift yourself back to what you've expressed as, okay, this is my intended will. Okay? Retraining your mind. Um, you want to try it, but my mom makes me feel scared of it. Um, that's interesting. Um, yeah, there's a lot of like Christian people, I'm assuming your mom's Christian, um, that 
sort of when you say meditation, they think that it's like evil. It's not. It's a. It's a. It's a focal. It's a focus exercise. It's not really. It's not evil. Um, but I don't know how else to say that, and I don't want to like say anything that's like gonna step on anybody's toes. I mean, I I want to respect your, you know, religion, but it's not evil. And um, you know, my father's actually a pastor. I guess um, you guys didn't know that, but he meditates. Um, but his meditation is his prayer and he uses his prayer. Oh, somebody just said, it. <laughs> yeah. So he uses his prayer as a meditation. And if his mind focuses to something that he, you know, if his mind wanders off to something that he doesn't want, he shifts it back to his prayer. So it is not, it's not evil. Um, so you have to kind of be the one to kind of come to terms with, you know, what you want to do with it, but it is a brilliant way to retrain and reclaim your mind. Um, so yeah what's you guys' favorite episode like sci-fi show i want to know you guys what 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 is like your favorite sci-fi show and your favorite episode of that sci-fi show tell me um i am a virgo uh, i'm very open and honest to share a lot of information man uh thank you what do i do next um just about what um like what to read um any mantras for meditations? Black Mirror. Black Mirror is an interesting show. I have not watched The Hundred, um, X Files, um, Death and Robots. I haven't seen all of Death and Robots. There was one episode I liked. Doctor Who. Yeah. Um, Altered Carbon. Altered Carbon was like two different shows. Somebody asked me about my mantra. I have a video on it, um, and I'll try to re remember it um, to remember to answer that in the end. Actually. Um, so the mantra that I repeat is, uh, it's an old George Harrison song called My Sweet Love. And the chorus, he goes, he says the mantra, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, 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 Hari, 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 Krishna, Hari, Krishna, 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 Hari, Hari. And I chose it at the time because I was reading another book by Eknath Esron called the, the Essence of the Upanishads. And in it, he talked about meditation. And I, he mentioned that that was one of his mantras that his grandma gave to him. Uh, it's called Essence of the Upanishads by Eknath Esron. And I just was like, oh, that's that George Harrison song. And I adopted it as my mantra. It doesn't mean anything to me as far as spiritually you know, concerned. But when I do repeat it, even the other day, it just kind of calms, um, calms me down. Red Dwarf was my shit. <laughs> like, I'm surprised somebody mentioned Red Dwarf. That is awesome. Red, I love it. I try to rewatch it. It's no longer like you got to pay for it. And I'm like... Man, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to pay for it. Um, Parasite anime on Netflix. I gotta get on anime. I gotta get on anime. Um, the and Battlestar Galactica. I gotta watch that. I've never watched that. Smallville. Thank you. Smallville. Smallville, man, that was like back in the day. <laughs> like Smallville was good. I don't think I watched as, as much as I probably should have. Um, yeah, Red Dwarf was my shit. And I actually started watching like even the movies that they would come up with every like three or so years, like smegging awesome. Um, but yeah, it's not free anymore. So, I mean, I like the show, but I'm not like committed to spending money on it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, the good place, is the good place count as, does a good place count as sci-fi, doesn't it? Cowboy Bebop, still I haven't watched that. Smoko was good. Umbrella Academy, I watched the first episode. I could not get behind the magicians. X-Files was dope. Farscape. Gate. Okay, so of all the shows that you guys listed, what, which episode was like one that you watched that just like threw you? Like you watched it and you were just like, like it just like shifted your perception of reality or it was just like your favorite episode that you were just like, oh man, I've got to like, I've got to watch this. Uh, or, or no, I've got to like pause and reflect on this. Like, like, um, Twilight Zone. I both I watched Twilight Zone every I watched Twilight Zone every New Year's like Eve. Like I'll I'll marathon it. Um Rick and Morty, of course. Um Fringe was good. Oh my gosh. Like you guys are coming with so many great behind your eyes. Yo, behind our eyes. Behind our eyes. I don't know if you guys have watched that yet, but whoo. Hi new friend. <laughs> Outer limits. Outer limits, I couldn't get behind. I don't know why. It was like, I feel like it was like, you know, like 
I feel like it was like Marvel versus DC, right? So it was like Outer Limits versus like Twilight Zone. And I feel like if you were like a Twilight Zone person, then like you just didn't fuck with like Outer Limits. I just made that up. I don't know if that's, if that's a thing. Um, Watchmen, A God Walks Into a Bar. That episode was brilliant. I, I will have to give it to you. Watchmen, just the series was well done. Um, thank you. Um, couldn't get behind Eureka. Eureka was good though. Honestly, like, okay, the last, like, the last couple of seasons were like, man, but I did enjoy Eureka. Watchmen threw me. Watchmen was good. I just missed what you said. Um, oh, thank you. So sweet. Appreciate you. Um, Fringe. I love Fringe. Watchmen was good. It's not, well, I mean, I could see why they're not bringing Watchmen back because, like, you know, what else could they have done with it, right? I guess. I mean... I can see why. I mean, sometimes it's good though when they just the first season of Sleep. Man, Sleepy Hollow. I'm not even. Gonna, <laughs> I'm not even gonna like go into that. Sleepy Hollow was so good, and then they just. I don't know what they. So I'm just gonna leave that for those of you who watched Sleepy Hollow. You know what I'm talking about. Like it just. I don't know what they. Yeah, I would agree with you on watching. I haven't watched Heroes. I don't think. But Watchmen. I feel like you know sometimes they take shows and then they just like beat it to death. And I just feel like sometimes it's just good to just quit, you know, like you just once it's once it's done, like let it just be done as opposed to just like, oh, it's really popular. Let's just like keep it going. Have you guys watched Westworld? Because I've not seen anybody comment Westworld. Come on, guys. Like Westworld? Nobody? That show's amazing. Have you guys? Well, the first the first the first season was a masterpiece. Westworld, guys. Firefly was good. Firefly was, Firefly was good. Yeah, but you're slacking yeah go watch it oh my god ah you guys westworld <laughs> stop slacking you don't even have to watch past the first where can you watch uh, westworld you can watch it on hbo i'm sure they like just they have like free trials or whatever you can watch it i haven't watched agent of shields but yeah you you gotta watch westworld like i remember watching westworld <laughs> and after i put this was a while ago was when it first came out i watched westworld and i was just like Am I a robot? <laughs> like that whole show threw me. Like I was like, yo, okay, what is this? Like, okay, so let me tell you guys what I wish they would have done. American Gods. I, I try to watch that show and I couldn't like get into it. Uh, Full Metal Alchemist. No, my, my cousin watched that. Handmaid's Tale. Man, Handmaid's Tale. I don't even want to start. Like I love the concept of Handmaid's Tale, but like, do you have a question of nature here? I need that on a shirt. Like, sorry, I'm like all over the place. Let me let me focus. But uh, Handmaid's Tale to me, I feel like it's. And I'm I'm sorry if you're a you're a fan. Good Omens was good, um, but Handmaid's Tale, like, it's like torture porn, guys. Like, like, I want to watch it because it's such a good show. You know what I mean? Freeze all the fuck. But like you like it's like every episode you're just like yo can you stop doing this like it's like they just it's just uh, it's too it's too intense for me like i love it as a concept but i just i can't keep i can't keep watching that but let me tell you guys let me tell you guys let me tell you guys what i thought they should have done with westworld you guys want to hear it have you ever seen brave new world i have not death note you guys are awesome uh, thank you. Thank you. Lovecraft Country. I gotta watch that. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Let me focus. Like, I'm gonna reel in my focus, my focus, my focus. My focus. Okay, so, so Westworld, right? I, I'll, I will, I don't know if should I say this? Should I spoil? I'm not gonna, do I wanna spoil? I feel like if you haven't, <laughs> if you haven't watched Westworld at this point, um, I, spoilers? Sorry. I'll try not to spoil it, but um, I'll try not to spoil it. How do I say this? So, okay, so this is what I wish they would have done with Westworld. Um, so, you know, if you guys are, I feel bad if I'm about to spoil it for a while. Um, I'm going to spoil it, sorry. But uh, <laughs> it's still worth watching. Go watch it. It's fine. You'll be fine. Um, so I like green is people. Um, but what I wish they would have done is that they should have had this where they, I'll step away, look away from your screens or cover your ears. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but 
so what I wish they would have done with well with with Westworld is that they should have had the guests upload their consciousness into like a robot body. I mean, they they hinted in the series that it was possible because what I had a hard time understanding was like the whole like sometimes guns work and sometimes they don't. Like that was weird to me, you know. But if they would have just had it, I have seen the original. It was interesting. Um, but if if they would have just had it where okay, I'm ho. I'm sorry, I'm not a host. I'm a, I'm a guest and I want to go into Westworld and I want to um, thank you and I want to upload my consciousness into this like theme park then it would make sense like when people would get shot you know what i mean because the whole thing where some guns work and then some guns didn't work like that was i didn't really get that but if they had it where then you couldn't really tell yeah right the guns would work sometimes and then they wouldn't work like that was you know that was weird so then if they had it where everybody was in a in a host body right but there were some people that were in the in westworld that you know, they were controlled by the game, right? Or they were, you know, AI, right? And then there were some people in the same West world, but they were controlled by like actual human beings. And you would just, it could have been easily done, right? That you just upload your consciousness into a robot, like a duplicate, like that one, uh, what is it? What's his name? With the bald, he's bald, surrogates, surrogates, the movie, surrogates. I don't know if you guys ever seen that movie, but basically, the premise was that in the future people like have these like sort of android bodies and they would upload their consciousness into the android bodies and then the androids would kind of walk around in the real world and everybody was like super attractive and perfect i wish they would have married that with westworld that would have made more sense you know like you know does that yeah that that would have made more sense than what they did where they just kind of had people and i feel like uh that it would have made the show like even like more like ooh like wait a minute are there people are there people in our world right now whose consciousness are controlling human bodies but their consciousness are from like another world or another reality right kind of like travelers you guys see the show travelers i feel like not that many people saw, saw travelers one uh, one of you guys actually mentioned it in the comments and i checked it out it was actually a really good show and the premise of travelers is that people from the future another kind of great concept people from the future um would transfer their consciousness back in time to try to am i spoiling somebody just said no <laughs> am i spoiling that um it was a good series um travelers was fun yeah it was i think that um i i'm not single but <laughs> um no you guys, so the funny thing is every, literally every day I get up and I look, I check the comments um, and somebody's always like, are you an alien or like, where are you from? And I'm just like, how would I even answer that question? Guys, like, listen, listen. Okay. If I were an alien. Okay. Hear me out. Yeah. Altered Carbon does do the thing they called it and Altered Carbon was really good. And the book was really good too. But hear me out, guys. So, <laughs> it's so funny. if I were an alien, okay, or if I were a time traveler, right? Why would I tell you guys? Hello? Why would I tell you guys? Like, think about it. Like, legit. Like, why would I be like, yeah, I'm totally an alien, guys. Like, <laughs> right? Like, okay. So we are all aliens who are from different worlds, some are from the same world to trick the mind. But I would not, I would not tell, I would not, I wouldn't. Because humanity has this thing about killing people that are different from them, right? Like I don't know if you've been paid attention to like everything, right? So like in every, um, in every, take us to, <laughs> in every movie ever that has anything to do with like an alien or a traveler from like a different time or from a different dimension or whatever, they get discovered and then humanity is like, oh, hey, they're different. Let's kill them. <laughs> like, I'm not, I'm not. No, so um, I'm good. Have you guys, uh, Resident Alien is good. I just started watching. Somebody recommended it and that's, it's really funny. Like it's incredibly funny. It's brand new. That just kind of popped into my head, but you guys should watch it. Um, it's called The Unicorn Theory. Now, what is that? Please, please expand on that. I've never heard of The, the Unicorn Theory. Um, but yeah. Um, yeah, I, 
you know, history and all of that. I, I feel like, uh, so, okay, so in, in, in high school or college, right, you learned one specific version of history. And then as you became older, or like as we got the internet, we realized that like literally everything they taught us of history was like complete and total uh, bullshit, right? And like, <laughs> like the whole Christopher Columbus discovered America, right? And they just drilled that into our heads. And then like as an adult, you're like, that's bullshit, right? If that, like just at a certain point, you kind of have to look at everything that we are taught as total and complete bullshit. Um, and then go from there. So somebody said like, you know, this is the fifth race of mankind to live on earth. You know what? Like, I will accept that. Like, you know what I mean? Like who, who really, who really knows? You know what I mean? Like who really knows? And who's to say that, the, you know, like one thing or one version of history is better than, you know, another, you know what I mean? So um, I'm all for that. Somebody asked something. Let me see. I'm going to like come through because I wanted to answer that. Uh, I'm so interested. No, that's not me. Um, ba -da -ba 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 -da -da -be. okay. Um, I'll wait for you guys to ask the same question again. Um, miss that part. Yeah. So for me, like if I, I'm all about sort of teaching yourself, right? There's loads of information. Oh, what happens after that? Oh, um, so along the lines of what I was just talking about, teaching yourself and coming to your own conclusions and forming your own theories, because it's all theory. Everything is theory. Gravity is theory. People, somebody keeps saying is earth, um, is earth flat, is earth flat. Um, and I literally have an episode on my podcast called Earth's Shape Doesn't Fucking Matter. Um, <laughs> and that's because I, I, I subscribe wholeheartedly to the simulation hypothesis. Right, so it's like if I'm playing a video game, I'm playing The Sims or whatever, and I'm playing an orc for the horde, and um, somebody's like, "Oh wait, you know, Orgrimmar, you know, it, it's flat or whatever." We're 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 in a simulation. It doesn't matter. Like, it doesn't matter. Um, so, <laughs> um, but back to the death. Um, conscious talk nerdy. <laughs> um, so consciousness does not die. So I sort of reiterate. Uh, Thank you. Um, do you do NFT art? Uh, please slide into my DMs if you know anything about NFT. Um, I don't know anything about NFT, but it does sound interesting. I do have some holdings in crypto. I actually have a video on my on my channel about Doge. Um, for the horde, yes! <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I do have some holdings in crypto, but I don't know anything about uh nft but i am interested so yeah please feel free to hit me up um <laughs> i'll slide by no damn thing um but so death um so i say this every single time and I, I and i reiterate it and the reason why i reiterate and repeat is because repetition is how we learn so like my last episode my last live i said you know you didn't just hear your abcs well message me about nfts man <laughs> to the moon yes <laughs> i literally have the shirt um, and everything. But anyway, so um, as I said, I, I subscribe to the theory of the simulation hypothesis. I subscribe wholeheartedly that this is, it is what it is. Um, you can tell me it's not, um, and I would tell you I, I don't care what you think because that's what I know in my heart to be true. Uh, that is a weird question. <laughs> that's a funny question. Uh, I'm not gonna touch that. Um, so death, um, what I keep reiterating is that, yes, I do believe that there are advanced civilizations. You guys have so many great questions, but like I need to answer one. <laughs> Ask that question again. Ask that question again, because I want to answer that and I don't want to forget it. Um, but I am talking about death um, right now. And um, so what I keep reiterating, um, every time I go live, most of the time when I talk to my podcast, that you are not your body. You are not your body. You are not your body. 
you are not your body. Your consciousness is having experience. I do have a podcast that's called, I have two podcasts. One of them is Your One Black Friend, that is ongoing. And then the other one is called The Dark Oracle's Guide to the Multiverse. It's 15 episodes, it's an anthology, and I basically, it's a little older, and I haven't added to it, it's just 15 episodes, and that's, no, I didn't say ask that question again. It's just 15 episodes, and, and that's it. Um, but that I kind of delve into the simulation hypothesis and why it is, you know, it, it's kind of set up more as like a guidebook. Like if you were in a simulation, um, if you were in a simulation, right, you will, thank you. Ah, you guys are awesome. You are awesome, Marcus. Thank you. Um, but uh, if you were in a simulation, right, if you woke up and you're like, I'm in a VR game, but you didn't have a guidebook, right? Um, but it was like, you know, it was like the simulation was sort of open source. And so people who played in the simulation could also like create a guide. What would that be? So I set up and created that, that podcast it was supposed to be sort of like an in-game guide, right? For people who, you know, find themselves in a simulation and they need like, you know, it's like a guidebook. Like, oh, so you're in a simulation, right? Do you guys remember that movie, uh, Beetlejuice? where like after they died, there was like a book and it was like, so you're dead or something like that. So that was kind of my idea. Um, it was a combination of like Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, but I was like, Dark Oracle's Guide, cause you know, I'm dark, uh, <laughs> but to the multiverse. Um, so that's kind of what I put it all together and that's what that was. Um, but it's just 15 episodes. Your One Black Friend is just me, like whatever is in my head that day, I sit, I hit record and I'm just talking. So it's stream of consciousness. If you, you know, want to, I guess, have a one-sided conversation <laughs> with me, um, then that's basically, uh, I've seen a lot of like random stuff, but that's, that's basically what that is, um, about. And it's, I like doing it because it's not, the other one was sort of more scripted and I like it and I, I enjoy doing it. And sometimes I'll go back and re-listen to that. Um, but the you want to like friend is just sort of more like it, it's become kind of a journal that I happen that just happens to sort of like share with like loads of people or whatever. Um, but yeah, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. So um, consciousness um, does not die. Um, so your, your, your physical form can die in the simulation, but it doesn't even really matter um, because you are just the player. And when your physical form dies, you can either get kind of reset back into the same life, which I've talked about in a previous video, a couple of videos on my TikTok talk about it. Um, that theory is called the eternal return. If you're interested in that, you can check it out. It's called the eternal return. Um, and by check it out, I mean like go to Google and type in the eternal return. Frederick Nietzsche wrote about it. Um, so did Schopenhauer and basically um, P.B. Uspensky, um, and Gurdjieff, uh, those sort of thinkers, they basically talked about how you just relive, you, you can relive the same life over and over again. Um, but that's that. So I'm not really terribly concerned with like, it was actually my curiosity about death. No, consciousness has always existed. Um, thank you. Um, but it, it, I'm not really like put off on death because I know you don't die. I mean, if people can remember their past lives and clearly something kind of carries on. Um, so that's kind of my approach. I hope I answered that and didn't kind of go off in too many uh, tangents at the same time. Well, it doesn't have to make sense to you, but it makes sense to me. Sorry. Uh, there are loads of books that you can read about the topic. If you're genuinely interested in it, go and seek the information out. Um, the books that I read and that I recommend are written by neurologists. They're written by um, neuroscientists. They're written by physicists. Um, read about it. There is physics of the soul. That's one that just kind of pops into my mind. Read about it and 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 kind of come to your own conclusions. But I don't, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but <laughs> I don't like to, I'm not gonna open my mouth and speak to people. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with like, um, like life paths or um, the Myers-Briggs test, um, but I don't like being wrong. <laughs> so I uh, am an INTJ and I'm a life path seven and I'm a Virgo. Okay, so Virgo uh, means that I'm super critical <laughs> of myself. Um, so any, there's nothing you could say that a person can say to me that I haven't already kind of said, you know, to myself, critical. Um, Tauruses are awesome. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, and then INTJ, like I'm very, like I'm, you know, analytical and I, I'm see, I seek out information. And then I'm a life path seven on top of that, which is just like, I'm a seeker. So if I'm saying something, right? <laughs> hey, you're like <laughs> right next to me. Um, yeah, if, I've, uh, if I'm saying something, um, 
I know what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> I, I don't know how else to say that uh, without sounding like a dick, but it's true. And that's typically why I don't get into arguments with people um, in the comments because you could usually tell um, Virgos are awesome, uh, but you can usually tell by the comment that the person hasn't her dirty ass <laughs> boy. Uh, you can usually tell by the comments, especially when they're like just uh, like abruptly negative, that the person is just like they're coming from a space of like ignorance. They don't know what they're talking about, and um, and then I, I I don't respond because I'm not like I'm not here to like go back and forth with you. So I typically. Uh, just block them. <laughs> I am the queen, and only you guys in my live at this at this moment right now know this. There's like 60 people. I'm about to tell you. So I've worked. I've grown a lot as a human being. Love you. Um, I've grown a lot as a human being. I have, but there's still a level of pettiness that I have to get past. And um, you know, I used to be the person that would go back and forth in comments like years ago. But you know, I meditate now. Uh, so I feel like I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm evolving. I'm growing spiritually, but I am quick to block and delete people. <laughs> like, like I don't, I'm deleting your comment and I'm blocking you. I don't care because the thing is, it's easier for me to just hit that block button um, and keep it moving than sit here and go back and forth with somebody. Exactly, it's just, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. So my, my, my inner pettiness comes in when I open up and there's a comment where somebody's just like running, writing dissertations about this and that. And I'm just like, bro, like it took you, it took you like 15 minutes to sit here and write this all out. And it's going to take me like three whole seconds to just be like, whoop, whoop, whoop. <laughs> I'm blocked. <laughs> so that is the, that's, that's my, that's my only, that's my only like pettiness in me. Um, but it's gonna be a while, <laughs> Gandalf. <laughs> exactly. Um, can you talk a little bit about the circle? Yeah, what would you like to know? Um, check out my website, jollyartist.com, if you're interested in the pieces. At some point, I will do a show and show you guys my pieces at some point in time. How old am I? I am. 5,000 years old. I'm just kidding. Now I'm 35. At least his body is. Um, any black male art. I have one over there. I, I don't paint a lot of guys yet and I and I need to. Ain't nothing wrong with the taste of petty. I need that as a shirt. <laughs> like just a smidge. Just a smidge of pettiness. Just a smidge of pettiness. Uh, but yeah, so if you're, <laughs> if you're, if you're, uh, if uh, if you say something and then you're like, wait, where did my comment go? Uh, it's because I deleted it. Because I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to have that on my page. Uh, yeah, I am 35. No, I'm not 27. I was born in 85, 80s baby. Thank you. You guys are sweet. I mean, you guys are awesome. No, I'm not. I'm not 27. Um, no, I'm definitely. I'm about to be 36 actually. <laughs> but I actually told myself. Um, in my 20s that I am not going to age and um, mind over matter guys like I could tell it to you guys and you guys won't believe me but I've actually been aging in reverse like I've just mentally there is a book I mentioned it earlier but this kind of reaffirms what I'm about to say to you guys it's called you are the placebo and in it the Dr. Dispenza talked about how oh thank you um, but he talked about how they took these uh, 70 year old men and they basically like put them in like a, a place for a week and told them that they were younger. And then they kind of like had them doing things that they did um, <laughs> when they were younger. And yes, you are the placebo. What did I say? Did I say the wrong thing? Um, but I hope I, I said that. Anyway, if I said the wrong thing, thank you. Yes, you are the placebo by Dr. Joe Dispenza. And he said that they put these, these older guys in their 70s and 80s in a situation and they physically like you could tell that they physically like regressed in age so i'm here to tell you and like legit like i looked at my older pictures and i was like i look younger now than i did when i was younger and that's just because i basically said like now nah, i i'm 
it's not gonna happen we're not we're not doing this like so it is possible yeah i'm benjamin buttoning myself <laughs> uh placebo plus great genetics well i appreciate it thank you but um like i i did say like i did look older when i was younger um so these are facts so um yeah can subliminal messages have placebo effect i haven't thought about that uh who's inviting me to go live with them um i don't know you <laughs> somebody just invited me to go live with them um but yeah uh, uh it's on audible it is on audible your mind is powerful the mind is powerful the mind is powerful i, I don't if you take nothing else from go read you are the placebo by dr dispensa um i don't feel like i say his name wrong but if you take nothing else from me um your mind is more powerful than we have been programmed to believe the mind is more powerful i sound like a broken record but i'm, I'm doing it on purpose you need to understand how powerful your mind is and when you're done with that when you're done with that, read Neville Goddard, The Complete Reader. Just, your mind is powerful. You are powerful. This is not, I'm not, this is not like I'm not Tony Robinson. <laughs> I'm not Tony Robinson, you guys, or whatever. But like, I'm sharing what I like, like, I have like, had to just come to terms with. Where, when I'm saying you don't know your power, you don't know your power. And right now, your power... And I, I hate always sounding so preachy, but it's true. Um, your power has been harnessed. The human mind, the power of the human mind has been harnessed and utilized for somebody else's benefit that is not your own. You need to reclaim that. And I'm not, this is not even like, I, I know what I'm saying sounds like weird or whatever, but I'm not. It's true. Your mind is powerful. Even if you, even if you took nothing else from me, like the simple fact that even at this point in time, they're saying like sugar pills, sugar pills are becoming more competitive at treating people than actual medication. These are facts. Okay. Th these are facts, right? They don't even, they don't know why, you know, placebos are becoming more and more effective at treating people, at treating people, placebo surgeries. I don't know if you've heard of uh, placebo surgeries but li literally like you could tell somebody okay we're gonna have surgery 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 yeah and if they believe that they've had surgery like their bodies will heal themselves like mind you've heard it over and over again mind over matter mind and it kind of goes through your head because you had because you've heard it so many times it's not sinking in mind controls matter if you don't if you you don't need to read a book if you're not really trying to read a book or whatever just google placebo effect that's it all the placebo effect is is a label that they slap on, on to basically say like your mind just healed yourself your belief healed yourself right so i'm tempted to bring up uh what is that uh doctor oh man come on what is that it's a marvel doctor doctor who am i thinking about doctor he he goes to what is his name? Dang it, with like with the cape. Where does he? Ugh, can't think of his name. Doctor Strange, right? And all that. That story. One of my favorite stories. Um, yeah, thank you, Strange. <laughs> one of my favorite stories. Watch that like it's a documentary. I mean, I know like I'm always quoting movies and stuff like that, but I'm also always quoting like legit books, you know. And understand that a lot of the time when people write fiction, and I know because I write, um, they're pulling from fact right and and a lot of the time fact reality is actually much stranger than fiction right a lot of stuff that happens like doge being a thing um a lot of stuff that happens you almost that happens in real life is almost like unpredictable compared to like you know what is written in fiction um but yeah that's you know it's a i painted that um but dr uh dr strange go back and watch it and watch it like it's like based on something you know that you should know because like i said if you take nothing else from me just the simple fact that the <laughs> dogecoin is modeled after me it's a simple fact um that the placebo effect or the nocebo effect 
like are a thing should tell you just how powerful the mind is just how powerful the mind is art mimics life and vice versa exactly um exactly so um yeah there it, it's funny because if we actually sit and have it and, and start as human beings connecting with each other like real talk like on the real um you'll hear people having very strange experiences but they don't share you know what I mean? Uh, because they're afraid that people are going to think they're crazy. So they keep all of these experiences to themselves. Um, but somebody just asked which book I recommended. It is called Neville Goddard, The Complete Reader. Um, I would recommend, uh, I would recommend that um, for sure. And I don't remember what the other one I, I reckon. Oh, oh, yes. You Are the Placebo by Dr. Joe Dispenza. Those two books. I haven't watched The Eternals. Um, you're very welcome. Um, the Eternals. What's that? What's the What's the Eternals? I feel like I should like check that out now. Um, thank you. Yeah, that I have another video that I have about like getting ideas from the future. Once again, I'm in my head. Um, I believe you by the way um but once again i'm in my head and i'm like if i put this out there like are people gonna know so you guys like if you haven't subscribed to me or like you know what i mean like where there's like a notification i don't know if they can do notifications on tiktok but um it would really help me out and i'm actually just like trying to you know i'm being genuine here it would really help me out like if you know you see that i've posted something you just go and like you know engage with it um because then that encourages me it helps me fight that negative voice in my head and it encourages me to keep kind of putting this stuff out there um so that uh you know gets seen um because otherwise like i'll talk myself out of stuff but there was another one there's another video that i'm just sitting on it's on my drafts about how your future um and how you can basically borrow ideas from the future steal ideas from the future um if you don't if you don't think that it's possible then you won't like actually try to do it um but i'm saying that it's done you know what i mean so and it, and it happens uh if this makes sense so it's not out here the new team movie from Marvel released in November. Oh man, I gotta find the I gotta find the uh the preview to that. Ooh, somebody sent me a flower thing. That's pretty. <laughs> um the force is real. Yeah. Movie arrival. Gosh, people keep mentioning arrival and I the only thing I know about arrival was that like aliens were trying to communicate. Like and I know that that's probably, like a horrible description. Hey, thanks for flowers. Um that's a lot of flowers, <laughs> so thank you. Um but thank you for the flowers. Um, that's a lot of flowers. <laughs> uh, but the only thing I knew I know about that is that yeah, the aliens were just trying to communicate, you know, with time. Uh, thank you for the flowers. That was really sweet. Um, and I need to, and I feel like I need to watch it because people keep suggesting that I do that. And Tenet. Tenet is another one that uh, people keep uh, messaging me and saying or uh, commenting that I watch. Um, but yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Uh, Arrival has an interesting take on time. You know, I, I'm gonna definitely check it out. Um, Stan Lee and Jake Kirby Eternals. Yeah, I'm gonna find the previews to that as well. Oh, I got fire now. <laughs> um, so how time works is uh, fascinating. Yeah, um, is so kind of muddy. Tenet, what do you guys think about Tenet? Have you guys seen it? Thank you for the compliment on my art, appreciate it. Um, you hit on nature. Manners, just energy, feel exactly. Tenet is so good. Um, it's borrowing ideas from the future video coming. Um, so somebody asked, when is my borrowing ideas from the future video coming? Um, I'm, I'm literally sitting on it. Like <laughs> I just, um, please repeat book titles. Uh, I will upload this video on YouTube because um, I have mentioned a lot of uh, videos. I have not tried LSD. I will post that video on borrowing ideas from the future. It's two parts, and I know how much you guys, everybody complains about two part videos on TikTok, but I promise you it's not like bullshit. Like each, <laughs> each video actually contributes something to the conversation, so I promise you. And I only made it two parts because, um, well, it's, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's not a simple you know, topic um, to talk about, but, and, and I wanted to make it understandable. I wanted to say it in a way where people would listen to it, watch it and go like, okay, well that makes sense. So when you're talking about not looking at time, um, 
uh, and or when you're talking about looking at time in a non-linear fashion and communicating like with yourself with your future self when you're tangled with i don't know if that's something that i could always like you can always say like in like 60 seconds so i i put it into two different videos and one is like a base level and then the other one like i'm expanding upon it and then i guess i'll open it up to questions um on the topic and then perhaps talk about it even more in the future but that book um, sorry, but that video was inspired by Physics of the uh, Physics of the Soul by Dr. Amit, and I don't remember his last name, but Physics of the Soul, and you can find that um, on Audible. Okay, let's stop looking at aliens as far off distant creatures when they've been here. I agree with that. Um, I agree with that. Have I watched Annihilation? I have. Um, well, I guess you weren't asking me, but I'm going to just uh, jump into the conversation. But yeah, I definitely watch Annihilation. I actually have a video on my YouTube where I broke it down. And the video is called something to the effect of we are all programmed to self-destruct. Uh, so if you're interested, you can check it out. Um, thoughts on the Anunnaki? I don't really think about them too much. Um, my focus is the human race, you know, um, and I'm, I'm like, I'm pro-humans. Um, so... That's my thing. I don't believe that they they came to enslave us um, and, and to, to mine gold. I think that's a weird sort of analogy, um, but that, that's just me. Um, what were you talking about when you said strange marks and feeling different was that afterlife? Um, no, it's just like sometimes, hey, it's just sometimes you, you wake up in the morning. Like I wake up in the morning, I look at my body and I go, okay, that wasn't there and I don't know where it came from, but that could have just been like shifting. Um, have I had an out of body experience? Like what Neville speaks of? Um, I don't know. I've had a. I've had experiences where I've like seen my own double, like my own double doppel or whatever. Um, and I have done things where I've like, I was like half unconscious and sort of like moved things like energetically, but I was like half asleep and I saw something, and like I I moved in a way and like uh, uh there was like a painting on on my wall that I did not touch, but I moved and it fell. So that has happened too, but I, as far as like just like consciously having an out of body experience, I have not, um, I'm not yet. I guess as an artist myself, I need a whole class on borrowing, borrowing what, borrowing from the future. Okay, cool. Well, this is good. I'm glad that you guys are, are kind of are behind that. I will post it probably sometime next week. Um, do I believe in reincarnation? Uh, yes. Um, do I believe in afterlife? I think life is an afterlife. Um, but yes. Um, communication to the plants, we speak back, uh, thoughts and aspect protection, blah, blah, blah. A lot of the questions you guys are asking, I've um, sort of talked about them on my TikTok videos. So I would suggest you check them out. <laughs> um, but yeah, definitely, I definitely believe in reincarnation. Um, I believe you can either reincarnate in a, into a new body or new form, or you can reincarnate into the same life. Um, life is an afterlife. Yeah, life is an afterlife. Like... There is a book called Life Before Life by Dr. Jim, I can't remember his last name, Life Before Life, but it's about reincarnation. Um, and what I mean by life, life is an afterlife is because, well, if you die and then you come back, like this is the afterlife, right? Or if you die in one reality and you shift to a parallel, uniform, un, uh, parallel universe, and that parallel universe, even though you might not be cognizant of what happened, that becomes like a, a type of afterlife, right? So it depends on how you perceive it. Like somebody asked me if I, thank you. Um, somebody asked me if I believe in God and my answer to that is always, how do you define God, right? Um, and that's a whole other sort of conversation. You know what I mean? So um, yeah, uniform was interesting wording. Yeah, parallel uniform. But it, I mean, it makes sense when you think about it because if you look at the human, your body is nothing more than like somebody that was a writer um, I believe it was Ekna S1 and he said he was a, a philosopher, but also I think like he was like a, you know, a professor as well. But he said, you know, like, it's like death is like taking off an old suit, you know? Um, so, you know, it could be in a way, uh, Loki thought about how maybe we don't ever die. We just continue on somewhere. We don't die. Um, and I could say that there was a point in my life when I could not have said that with confidence but i will say that now we don't die so just you know if you're it depends on if you're identified as form right if you think that you are the physical body then yeah well form does die right die in a way but once again 
if all of time is happening at once like and it's you know all a loop like you you yourself your consciousness can come back right and live the same body again right at any point in time across the multiverse it, it's a very complex simulation and that is why oh that's so weird this keeps happening like i'll say something and then i'll look down and somebody says the exact same thing as i said it so yeah there's some some synchronicity happening um you know right now yeah data transfer that's a great way to put it actually um so here's the way i look at it so let's look at your phone right if you break your phone right now right so look at your phone your phone is your physical body okay if you break your phone right now you have data on your phone it can be transferred right so the phone gets broken you go get a new one and you can upload that data transfer that data to a new phone and then your phone you could like that new phone like it's almost like this didn't really matter and it's like you know you just keep going on it's the same thing that's the same thing and you can also transfer i can either transfer my phone to a similar model right or get the phone fixed or whatever it is um or i can you know upgrade to a different phone and that's how i view life basically um what is life opening is that we are taught to be in the prison of our form exactly the word death came from the word meaning proceed agreed upon interesting it's never the same phone brand interesting i think that you can kind of come back to the same i mentioned eternal return return rather um what other matter oops going so fast <laughs> you don't even judge me from a higher being i do not i absolutely do not um i do not believe in judgment from a higher being i think that when people have a death experience um and the way i see death is essentially consciousness just leaving the body so even when they say oh you've had a near-death experience or people have had a near-death experience i look at it and say no you definitely just had a death experience like that's not a near-death experience like you died <laughs> okay um so when people have a death experience and then they interact with, with you know forms or whatever that form that they're interacting with could literally just be them um but i don't believe no it doesn't make any sense it's not logical it is not logical um that uh, a, an all-knowing, all-powerful, all-loving being who knows everything and knows that you're gonna come to this earth and you don't know anything, like your memory has been wiped, right? And then you get sent to this planet, right? And then you have no idea what you're doing, okay? And then you make mistakes and then you like die and then that being goes, ha ha, fuck you, and then like burns you forever. Like who does that? Like that's not, that makes no sense to me. I don't accept that. It's not logical. So I, I don't, you know, I don't, no, I don't believe that an all loving God would be judgmental. To me, that's actually like this, like, I don't know, that's disrespectful. You know what I mean? Like I wouldn't do that and I'm just a regular person, right? So why would a creator of all things do that? And more importantly, if I take you, there's a Black Mirror episode about this. No one of you guys mentioned that you like, it doesn't make sense, but I know you guys mentioned uh, Black Mirror. There's a Black Mirror episode about this, where this, and let me know if you guys remember watching this, but there's this lady and she's like in this loop, right? And she's like running and people are like filming her and she's being chased. Um, I saw this a long time ago, so I'm trying to like, trying to like, piece it together but she's being chased and then she gets to this like one situation where like everybody's watching them and she has no idea what she's there why she's there and she's like freaking out somebody's talking about ghosts and she's freaking out and she's panicking and you're like rooting for her or whatever um and then turns out white bear yep that's it and then it turns out that she did this like horrible thing and so the way that they punish people the white bear episode the way they punish people is that they wipe their memory and then just like their entertainment kind of and then they just make them suffer over and over and over again um to me that was like that made me pause and think like okay well that's essentially like you know what they want us to believe is you know earth like so how can i atone for something if you're wiping my memory and making me redo the same thing over and over again like that doesn't sit right with me and so that's why i said in that one video i, I put out about like omniscience um i said you know our definition our understanding of god is flawed um because it doesn't make any sense the way we we define god to be merciful and loving kind and all these other things and then like he's just gonna like 
So he knows, right? He knows everything you're going to do or she knows everything you're going to do. Um, and then she like, or he sets you out to do it or they set you out to do it. And then they punish you for all eternity by lighting you on fire, lighting you on fire. And it, hell didn't, wasn't even in the original. Anyway, I don't want to get on this topic. Like I could, that's a whole different. So yeah, uh. I don't believe in a judgment, oh God. <laughs> so <laughs> I, that, I could, that's something I could talk about and, uh, and uh, I, I, will, uh, I will let that go. But yeah, no, I don't believe in, in a judgmental God. Um, they'll come for you. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, you know, we'll just leave that. Uh, okay. There are more religions in Christianity. And at the end of the day, my thought process is form your own understanding right the books that we sort of you know worship right they're not really meant to be worshipped they are meant as guidebooks and what I particularly enjoy about Neville Goddard's writings I'm not you know I'm not I don't identify as a Christian um actually enjoy studying little bits of you know different religions, right? Like I love reading about the Gnostics. You know, I love reading about Buddhists. I love reading about, you know, Hindu, Hindu, Hinduism, um, uh, you know, Zen Buddhism, like all of that. So I also like grew up, you know, reading like Greek mythology and all of that. So I like kind of, you know, keeping an open mind. And I would, I would suggest that you guys do the same, um, do the same things. Keep an open mind and form your own religion. But these books, what I liked about what I liked about Neville Goddard's book, and I always say skip the, the first chapter, is that he basically says like you know the Bible is uh, it's not meant to be taken literally, or whatever, and you know you know that's what he says, and I like his approach to that. Um, but you know do with that information what you will, but keep your minds open in the sense and form your own conclusions. Um, yeah. Do 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 do. Okay, guys, I don't know how long I've been talking. <laughs> An allegory it is. Well, that's what they say it is. Um, but uh, I feel like it's been like a while, right? Um, so I should probably let you guys go. <laughs> I mean, clearly, you guys can see I could probably talk for ages. Um, and if there's anything you want me to talk about, like I said, you know, leave a comment. I don't always see all the comments because sometimes it's like a lot I do try to respond to as many as I can um, but sometimes like a video will like blow up and then like it's a lot of comments um, and I can't respond but I do try to uh, I thank you guys you guys are awesome um, I do try to check my my DMs so if you have a question or if you're like hey I want to know more about this book please 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 um, I'm sorry about this topic please just send me a message and if you if something that you're interested in like stoicism you know religion um you know philosophy the quantum physics even like anything that you're like genuinely interested in please please thank you thank you guys please feel free to message me um i may not respond right away um but if it's a genuine sort of request for knowledge or for a book or something like that i'm happy to point you guys you know in the right direction so um or not you know in the direction that you're seeking <laughs> not to say my way is the right way but in, in in a direction that you know might help you um but somebody just sent me gifts and hearts and 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 more gifts and hearts and thank you thank you guys so much i you know every time i do a live i'm gonna put this on my youtube um <laughs> every time i do a live i like you know the voice in my head with the negativity and then I come and I go, fuck it, I'm gonna sit and talk anyway. And then you guys come through and like, it's always amazing. And like, yeah, it's been amazing. And you guys, you guys are like giving me stuff to talk about, you know, like I always wonder like, what am I gonna talk about? And then you guys are like with the questions and I'm like, yes, come through with the questions. So thank you, I appreciate you. You guys are so great. And I'm grateful for each and every one of you to stop by. Um, you guys are all blessings. Um, so thank you. Uh, I don't, there's like a disco ball. That's cool. <laughs> I'm like easily entertained. All right, guys, I gotta like go eat food now. It's, yeah. But thanks for stopping by. Thanks for, you know, subscribing and all of that.
You guys are great. Happy Friday. Thank you. Bye bye. No problem.